Whether you're going to win or lose in week three, it's time to hit the waiver wire and improve your roster. I got over 20 names that you could potentially add. So if you're in a smaller or larger league, I've got you on today's video. Let's just quickly start off with names that should already be rostered. So if you're in a smaller league, these guys might be available. Chuba Hubbard, who is a great spot start until Jonathan Brooks is back. DeAndre Hopkins, who finally healthy, was a wide receiver one in Tennessee this week. Quentin Johnson, Carson Steele, two names that we heavily discussed last week on the video. And then Darnell Mooney, for some reason, he's still available in some leagues. He's a flex that you can play most weeks. He should definitely be picked up. Okay, this takes me to my top 10. The first thing that we'll talk about, I wanna be very specific. You should only pick up this name if you need a flex this week. This is not a long-term fix. No surprise, this is Jawan Jennings, okay? Available in a high percentage of leagues across the board. In week number three, he led the Niners in snaps, routes run, and targets. More than Brandon Ayuk in every single category, in fact, he had the game that Brandon Ayuk owners really wanted Brandon Ayuk to have. He had 11 catches, 175 yards, and three touchdowns. Look, if you don't plan on starting Jennings this week, he would probably not be my number one pickup just because I don't think he's a long-term fix for your roster. He's just a temporary play. He's a band-aid at this point because when Debo Samuel's back, when Kittle, CMC, when all these names are back, you can't start Jawan Jennings. We know he won't be a priority name in this offense. However, this week he does play the Patriots. The Patriots are currently a top 10 matchup for fantasy wide receivers. So look, if you need a start and you want to get a win this week, he's a fine option, especially if Kittle misses another game. I'd spend about 10% of my fab on him. All right, my 1B, this would be my number one preference if I'm looking for a long-term play. That would be Bucky Irving. We have talked about him a lot um, on our channel already, so I assume he's rostered, but I went and looked, and on ESPN and Yahoo, he's still available in a lot of platforms. He continues to do a lot with a little. Played 31% of the snaps on Sunday versus the Denver Broncos, but he actually out-touched Rashad White in that game, 12 to 11 opportunities. So he had one more opportunity than Rashad White. That is significant because that's the first time that's happened this season. And here's something interesting to look at. Bucky Irving got an opportunity on 66.7% of his snaps. Rashad White had an opportunity on just 26% of his snaps. So while Rashad White is out there more often, snap percentage wise, they're being more intentional about when they use Bucky when he's on the field. So I do think his role could grow. Bucky this week on 12 total touches had 84 total yards, 7.7 .7 yards per carry. Rashad White on 11 total touches had just 35 total yards and averaged 2.8 yards per carry. Just last week, we had Rashad White at 1.8 yards per carry. The week before that versus Washington, everyone's destroying Washington on the ground, by the way. And Rashad White was averaging two yards per carry. I mean, reality is if Bucky keeps out playing him, they'll have to continue to give Bucky a larger role. And in my opinion, he has a legit chance at some point to be the RB1 on this team. If not, be the guy who gets the most touches. I spend about 15 to 20% of my fab, depending on, you know, how desperate you are at running back. Let's say you're a zero RB team. He should definitely be rostered. Now I have my one C. So one A, one B, one C. My one C is Braylon Allen. Why do I prefer Bucky Irving over Braylon Allen? Well, I believe that Bucky can be the RB one for the Tampa Bay Bucks just by outperforming the guy ahead of him in Rashad White. I do not believe that is possible for Braylon Allen. I don't think it matters how good Braylon Allen plays. This will still be Brees Hall RB1 on this team. That will not change unless there's an injury to Brees Hall. So that's why I personally prefer Bucky over Braylon, but they're in the same tier for me. Braylon, great news, consistently getting involved each and every week in the last two weeks. In week three, he had 14 touches, 21 touches to Brees Hall. So that was good to see him getting involved. And he just keeps playing out of his mind. I mean, last week, he averaged five yards per carry and he had three targets. He looked really good. We've seen this so many times in an Aaron Rodgers led offense where they've had two running backs that you've been able to start. I know people hate when I say the name AJ Dillon, but think about when AJ Dillon first came into the league, those first couple of years, he was a reliable fantasy asset. Think AJ Dillon to Aaron Jones. Think Jamal Williams to Aaron Jones. That's the kind of vibes I'm getting with Braylon. But the reality is he is better than those players. Very clearly, he's better than what AJ Dillon was at any point. He's better than what Jamal Williams was at any point. So he could actually develop an even bigger role than those names. I'd spend again about 15 to 20% of my fab on him if you're desperate for a running back. All right, 
And number four, let's talk about some wide receivers that you should be picking up. That is the Carolina Panther wide receivers. If you were watching our stash video this week, we talked about these names. We were excited to stash them, so hopefully you were able to do that. But Adam Thielen and Xavier Leggett, I don't care which one of these names is available for you. I prefer Adam Thielen if that's who you can pick up. Now, we also have to keep in mind that Adam Thielen is dealing with an injury. We don't know if he's going to be available to play. So there's a lot of factors here. But the Andy Dalton effect is in full swing. This week, Andy Dalton threw three touchdowns. It all came in the first half. They were so dominant, this Carolina Panthers offense. Um, and you see Deontay Johnson with 14 targets, Xavier Leggett with three, Adam Thielen with five. But you have to keep in mind that Adam Thielen only played in the first half, okay? He caught a touchdown in the end zone and injured himself. He did not return to the game. So five targets and a touchdown in the first half alone is super interesting for Adam Thielen. In fact, if Adam Thielen was healthy, I think you could make an argument that he should be the number one pickup. That's how reliable he could be moving forward if Andy Dalton is a starter for this team. We saw it last year when Andy Dalton played. He and Thielen had a great connection. He had multiple fantasy wide receivers. And shout out to Deontay Johnson, by the way. That was a my guy this year, one of my my guys. And it was not looking good to start the season. But finally, we have a revival for him. We have a revival for this entire offense. And Andy Dalton is really leading the way in this, you know, newfound look for the Carolina Panthers. But definitely, if you need a flex play, both of these guys are in play. Keep in mind, Xavier Leggett is a young rookie. His role could grow over time. Okay, do you need a quarterback? Do you need a startable quarterback that you can stream? Let's talk about Sam Darnold. We have seen enough consistency at this point from Sam Darnold to put him in that category, a decent streaming option from week to week. He leads the league in passing touchdowns with eight. He was a quarterback for in week two and at in week three at the time of recording this at least he's the quarterback six i mean when you have justin jefferson to throw the ball to your job's going to be made a little bit easier but keep in mind guys they haven't had jordan addison they haven't had tj hawkinson when you add those two names to this offense again how good could sam darnold be i mean are we talking about a top eight finish for sam darnold that would be crazy but i'd be willing to spend about 10 percent of my fab if you have like no reliable quarterback that you can start week in and week out. Same thing we were talking about with Baker Mayfield uh, a couple weeks ago. All right, at number six, if you need a running back, this is a cheaper option, Kareem Hunt. I'd only spend about 5% of my fab on him because I do think the running back backfield in Kansas City is a little bit messy. He was inactive in week three. That was the plan all along. He wasn't inactive because he was bad or because he wasn't good enough. That was just the plan. You know, he needs to get into the offense, he needed to get into the building, familiar with the game plan that they currently run. So, so you could see Kareem Hunt with a larger role in week number four. And ultimately, as well as Carson still played, I think that there's an open door here for someone to kind of be the guy still. So I think Kareem Hunt should be rostered. At number seven, do you need a tight end? Well, I have some options for you, but I want to be realistic with you guys. I'm not willing to spend big on these tight ends. I'm just not. Let's talk about Cole Komet first. Cole Komet had 11 targets this game, caught 10 of them for 97 yards and a touchdown. Great. But we have seen this before with so many tight ends. Just last week, we were talking about Hunter Henry. This is the nature of the tight end position. It's boom, it's bust. So if you want to pick up Komet, totally get it. Go pick him up, but do not splash the cash on these tight ends. It's just not, we, you've, you've already seen two bad games and now you're going to pick him up and expect what you saw in week three. It's just not always going to be that consistent, but you can pick him up and hope that it's a trend that continues. As far as Tyler Conklin goes, he has a career high in receiving yards in week three on Thursday night football with 93 receiving yards. I think this could be fool's gold. Maybe he's the next great tight end, but he had 16 yards through two weeks. What are the odds? Like the odds are higher that he's a bust than he's a reliable guy moving forward so all i'm saying is if you're going to pick up one of these tight ends do it but don't spend much of your fab if any like because any of these tight ends could bust we know that at this point at number eight let's talk about alan lazard i'm not personally bought into alan lazard i don't think he's ever going to be a consistent play you can disagree with me that's totally okay but i just don't think you're ever going to know when to start him guys he had three targets what are we supposed to do with three targets that's not something that you can rely on and more importantly, if you want a piece of this offense, I think you should go pick up Mike Williams for free. He's the cheaper option. Mike Williams had a target on 12% of his snaps. Lazard had a target on 5% of his snaps. 
So as Mike Williams continues to get more and more involved, I think he could be the preferred option over Lazard anyway, and he's going to be cheaper for you. I'm sorry, I just don't buy into this Lazard thing continuing for the rest of the year. At number nine, let's talk about a cheap running back here, Rashawn Johnson. This is sneaky, okay? This is very sneaky. He is starting to eat into DeAndre Swift's work. Swift on Sunday had 16 touches. Rashawn Johnson, 13 touches. So he's starting to eat into that workload. He had five targets versus three for DeAndre Swift. And I love the way they're using Rashawn Johnson. If you look at his utilization, he's that salmon color that we're looking at here. He was mostly there for two-minute drill. That's exciting. He was definitely the third down back. He got some short yardage work, some goal line work, some early downs. They're kind of using him all over. But in PPR formats, he got five targets to DeAndre Swift's three. That's very interesting to me moving forward. And DeAndre Swift has been playing so poorly. I don't think there's another running back in the NFL who has played worse through three weeks. In week one, three yards per carry. In week two, 1.2 yards per carry. In week three, 1.5 yards per carry. How many times... Can you put DeAndre Swift out there and have him play poorly and continue to go back to it? I just don't know, especially when you have guys like Rashawn Johnson who are just playing better. Ultimately, I think at some point they might have to make that change. And I'd like to have Rashawn on my roster if I have a free space. All right. At number 10, the best streaming defense of week number four. If you want to think ahead, Titans defense versus the Miami Dolphins. If Skylar Thompson is playing, he looked lost. Skylar Thompson surely wore a diaper on Sunday because that boy looked scared on every single play. He did not look safe. He looked uncomfortable. He looked nervous. I just feel like if they're going to put him back out there, maybe they switch a different quarterback. I don't know. But right now that offense is dysfunctional and I want a part of that matchup. All right, let's talk about some honorable mentions. If you're in deeper formats, you can think about these guys. Look, Andy Dalton should already be rostered in Superflex leagues. That's why I haven't talked about him. Emmanuel Wilson, Demario Douglas, Wanda Robinson, Tutu, who got some good looks with the Rams, uh, Antonio Gibson, Jahan Dotson, if we know that Devonta Smith's going to miss time, as well as AJ Brown. And Cal Calvin Olsen had a really, really good game. So in deeper formats, those are names that you can consider as well. All right, over 20 names there, guys. I appreciate you for watching the, the video. Do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comments below. If you agree or disagree with some of the takes, that's okay. But make sure if you're in a fab league, you look at the graphics because I show how much fab I'd spend on each player. And I would just be careful with those tight ends, like I said. I appreciate you watching. Check out the pinned comment. You can ask me a question at any time you want. Start, sit, trade, whatever the case may be. With the pinned comment, you can do that. But outside of that, I appreciate y'all for watching. Good luck this week. All up. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh.